In this video, we will practice performing transformations. We will look at the transformations that are described by a rule like this one. And uh, we will write out what transformations are happening. And then we will apply those transformations to a single point and find out what the new point would be. So looking at number 40, we have these two transformations. Anything inside the function is going to affect the x values. Anything outside the function is going to affect the y values. So a 3 in the front of the function would be a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. But a 3 inside the function is going to be the opposite of that. Instead of vertical, it will be horizontal. Instead of a stretch, it's going to be a compression. So this 3 represents a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 third. Okay, so let's go back and take a look again. Of course, this minus 5 is going to move the function down 5. So we have the horizontal compression and we have down 5. Okay, now we're supposed to think about what will happen specifically to the point 6 comma 1. So we have an x value of 6 and a y value of 1. And we've got these two transformations. Again, any transformation on the outside of the function is going to affect the y value. So I'm going to need a new y value. And I will get my new y value by taking the old y value and subtracting 5 from it. So um, 1 minus 5 is negative 4. This will be my new y value. I'm also going to need a new x value. Remember that this was a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 third. So for that reason, I'm going to get my new x value by multiplying my old x values by 1 third. All right, that'll be a horizontal compression. So 1 third times 6 is 2. So um, my old x and y value the original point was 6 comma 1. The new point is going to be 2 comma negative 4. All right, let's take a look at the next problem. Look at number 41. I already spoke about the 3 that's in the front. Uh, this is going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. Boom. What else we have? Um, having a 2 on the inside, this is going to be a shift to the left 2. Everything is the opposite of what it looks like on, on the inside. So plus 2, you would normally think maybe to the right, but it's actually to the left. Okay, so let's add that to the list. Left 2. All right, now let's find out what happens to our original point, 6 comma 1. Okay, so I have the point 6 comma 1. Any transformation outside the function is going to change the y value. So I'm going to need a new y value. So um, we are multiplying by 3. So 3 times my y value, that will give me a new y value of 3. Anything happening inside the function is going to affect the x value. All right, so I'm going to need a new x value. Remember, this is left 2. So for that reason, I will have to do x minus 2. 
Um, so that's going to give me 4. So my original point was 6 comma 1. But my new point is going to be 4 comma 3. Okay, let's take a look at number 42. This one half on the inside of the function is going to be a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2. Um, think reciprocal. The reciprocal of one half is 2. So on the inside of the function, um, if it's less than 1, it's actually going to be a stretch. All right, Everything is the opposite of the way it looks. In the front, it's a vertical a stretch or a compression. In the inside, it's a horizontal stretch or compression. And uh, if it's less than one, it's actually a stretch. So horizontal stretch by a factor of two. Kabam. All right, what else we got over there? Meanwhile, this plus five on the end, that is going to be up five. So let's go ahead and add that to the list. up 5. All right, let's find out what happens to our original point 6 comma 1. Okay, I have 6 comma 1. Anything happening outside of the function is going to affect the y value. Okay, so this plus 5 is going to give me a new y value, so I will do y plus 5. So that's going to make this 6 will be my new y value. Anything happening inside the function is going to change the x value. So I'm going to need a new x value. However, please remember, this is a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2. So, I actually need to multiply my x values by 2, all right, because it's a stretch by a factor of 2. So, that's going to make my new x value be 12. So, the bottom line is my original point was 6, 1. But my new point is 12, 3. Six. Okay, that's number 42. Let's take a look at number 43. This one half in the front is going to be a vertical compression by a factor of one half. Okay, and then we have the minus three that's going to move us to the right 3. It's the opposite of the way it looks. So this is going to move us right 3. So those are my two transformations. Now let's see what happens to our original point 6 comma 1. Okay, anything happening outside the function will affect the y value. So I will get my new y value by doing uh, 1 half y. So that's going to make this 1 half. Anything happening inside the function is going to affect the x value. But remember, this is to the right 3. So I will get my new x value by doing x plus 3. So that's going to be 9. So my old point was the point 6 comma 1. The new point is going to be 9 comma 1 half. 
Okay, let's take a look at number 44. There are no transformations happening outside the function. So anything that's uh, going to happen will only affect the x value. Um, there's something that we have to do though. Before we can look at this and decide if it's left or right, we have to factor this negative sign outside of parentheses. So if I take this negative sign out and put it in front, then inside the parentheses I will have x plus 2. All right, you have to, if there's a b value, even a b value of negative 1, if there's something here, it has to come outside of the parentheses before you read it. So really, um, the function becomes this. Okay, we have f of this. Okay, so I have two transformations. This negative sign is a reflection over the y-axis. Um, when it's in the front, it's a reflection over the x-axis. But this is a reflection over the y-axis. And of course, left 2. It's the opposite of what it looks like. So there you go. Reflection over the y-axis and left 2. Now, let's see what happens to our point 6, 1 as we perform these transformations. So, nothing is happening outside the function. So, the y value will not change. However, the x value will have to change. If I want to do a reflection over the y-axis, I'm going to need a negative sign on this x. If I want to move left 2, remember that this is left 2, I am going to have to then subtract 2. So if I do the opposite of x, that's going to be negative 6. Minus 2 is going to be negative 8. Please don't crash. Um, so that's negative 8. So I got a new x value, negative 8. The y value stayed the same, so it's still going to be 1. So 6, 1 will become negative 8, 1. Take a look at number 45. This negative sign in the front is going to be a reflection over the x-axis. Now the 3 is its own transformation. This is a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. Um, don't say by a factor of negative 3, just say by a factor of 3. And then um, the minus 7 on the inside, this would be right 7. And then the plus 1 would be up 1. Okay, did you get all that? Reflection over the x-axis. Vertical stretch by a factor of 3, right 7, and up 1. Now, let's see what happens to our original point, 6, 1. Anything happening outside the function is going to affect the y value. So we're definitely going to have a new y value. There are two transformations affecting the y value, two transformations outside. Well, three if you count the negative uh, separate from the three. But we'll, what we can do is we can take this negative three and multiply that by the y value. And then we can take this one and add it. So it, if we do this, we're doing all three transformations to the y value. So if I multiply one by negative three, uh, that gives me negative three then negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. So my new y value is going to be negative 2. Now we will also need a new x value. Anything happening inside the function is affecting the x value. Remember this is actually to the right 7. So I'm going to have to do x plus 7. So that's going to make this 13. So my new point is going to be 13, 
comma negative 2. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number 46. The negative in front is going to be a reflection over the x-axis. Um, then minus 2 on the end is going to be down 2. Before I deal with this, I need to factor this 2 outside of parentheses. So I need to rewrite this as 2 times the quantity x plus 3 before I try to read it. Oh, I always feel like I need a different color now. So I'm going to have y equals negative f of this minus 2. So this 2, if I had a 2 in the front, it would be a vertical stretch. A 2 on the inside is going to be a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 half. All right, it's the opposite of what it looks like. So this is a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 half and left 3. Okay, so again, we had a reflection over the x-axis. Um, horizontal compression, compression by a factor of 2. That doesn't make sense. <clears throat> that should be by a factor of 1 half. And left 3 down 2. So let's see what happens to our original point 6 comma 1. Well, anything on the outside of the function is going to affect the y value. So I'm going to have a new y value. I'm going to have to do this negative sign, and I'm going to have to do the minus 2. So that's going to make this negative y minus 2. So that'll make this negative 1 minus 2 which is negative 3. So that's my new y value. I'm also going to have a new x value. Okay, so these transformations inside of the function will affect the x value. So I definitely need, need to multiply by 2. So I'm going to have, um, wait, that's false. I'm not going to multiply by 2. Erase. Um, I almost made the same mistake over here a minute ago. Remember, I have a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 half. So I'm not going to multiply by 2. I need to multiply by 1 half. All right, so I can get that horizontal compression happening. So I'm going to do 1 half x. And then to get the left 3, I need to subtract 3 afterwards. So half of 6 is 3. And then minus 3 is <clears throat> 0. So my new point would be 0, comma, negative 3. My new x value and my new y value. All right, this will be the last problem. OK. <clears throat> Now, <clears throat> we really need to factor this one-third outside of parentheses. Anytime there's a b value here um, on the inside, you have to factor it outside of parentheses. It'll still be inside the function, though. So if I take this one-third and put it in front of the parentheses, then I'll have x minus, but what? Um, so I need to, uh, when you've, factor something out, you have to divide by it. So I have to do 2 divided by 1 third. Let me put this off to the side. I have to do 2 divided by 1 third. Um, in order to divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So dividing by 1 third is the same thing as multiplying by 3. So that's why I'm going to get a 6 right here. And I will go ahead and write the rest of the function around it. So this is all what I have inside the function. So meanwhile, we have y equals 2, and then f of all this. 
and then the minus 3. Okay, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 transformations. This 2 is a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. This 1 third is a horizontal stretch by a factor of 3. All right, it's the opposite of what it looks like. So it's not a compression, it is a stretch. And this is right 6 and down 3. Okay, vertical stretch by a factor of 2, horizontal stretch by a factor of 3, right 6, down 3. Alright, by the way, when I say by a factor of 3, I'm doing the reciprocal. So, let's see what happens to our original point, 6, comma 1. Remember that any transformation that happens outside the function is going to affect the y value. So I'm going to have a new y value um, for my uh, vertical stretch by a factor of 2. That means I need to multiply by 2. To shift down 3, I'm going to have to subtract 3. So 2 times 1 is 2. Minus 3 is negative 1. Now, anything happening inside the function, and I really need to look here and here, this will affect the x value. So I'm going to need a new x value. Remember that this one third is a horizontal stretch by a factor of 3. So that's why I need to multiply by 3. All right stretch by a factor of 3. Got to do the reciprocal. And then um, this minus 6 is actually going to send us uh, to the right 6. So that's why I need to add 6. So I'll be going to the right. So 3 times 6 is 18. 18 plus 6 is 24. So my new point is going to be 24 comma negative 1. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Go ahead and click here in the red apple to watch the next video. Click in the green apple to subscribe or click the yellow apple for the full playlist.